Well, it's not uh, only hospitals and treatment centres that volunteers are helping tackle Ebola. Humanitarian mapping is also becoming a vital part of actually tracking this outbreak. That's where satellite images are used to document roads, schools and buildings in small towns affected by the virus. The collected information helps aid agencies navigate around the area to see where populations are and where the disease might actually spread to. Well, with me now is Harry Wood, the organiser and board member of Humanitarian Open Street Map, and also Andrew Bray. He's a disaster response programme manager for the British Red Cross. And we're also joined by Pierre Belland in Montreal, a volunteer with Open Street Map and a former economist. Thanks to all of you for joining us here. This is a, a fascinating area. Harry, to you, first of all, the origins of this was Haiti after the earthquake. I was reading a fascinating story from MSF who said they got a call from a nun in a remote village saying, please help us, we're seeing a disease that we never had before, and that was cholera. So they sent their teams out, and every village they got to, they thought, this must be it. But, of course, it wasn't. And, and that crystallises the need for proper mapping, doesn't it? That's right. So MSF at that time was uh, responding to this disastrous earthquake that hit in, in Haiti. This was 2010. Uh, people had speculated about the importance of, of maps and of open street map uh, in producing disaster response maps uh, before that, in fact, um, since the origins of, of the open street map project. And what we're seeing there on the screen we saw the original map of Port-au-Prince and then what you have done. Just explain in simple terms what that is on the screen. Well, OpenStreetMap is, uh, at its core, it's a database of map data. So it's vector data, the coordinates and positions of the roads and the health centres and everything that you would put on a map is represented in data form, in raw data form within OpenStreetMap. It can be downloaded for free as open data. Um, so this is one of, the, one of the reasons behind OpenStreetMap is to make, make an open data map. And it was um, credited with saving many lives in Haiti. You, you have been doing it uh, in West Africa with Ebola. Andrew, how vital a, a tool is this for the aid agencies on the ground? So I think in Haiti it was a bit of a surprise and seeing the evolution of OpenStreetMap. Um, but with the typhoon and with Ebola at the moment, it's a crucial part of what we do. So um, everything from logistics through to tracking the spread. T take, um, take me through it practically. How is it of use for, for people of your agency on the ground dealing with this? Practically, um, so the epicentre of the epidemic was not on the map before the humanitarian open street map put it there. Um, and the villages around that, where the patients were coming in from, um, where we have a, an Ebola treatment centre, that was literally not on a map. You wouldn't be able to find those villages. Um, so, so what sort of difficulties was, was that posing for you, not having access to, to that sort of information readily on maps? So one of the biggest components of this Ebola thing is the contact tracing. Like very important to keep track of all of the... If somebody has Ebola, you need to keep, keep track of everyone that um, they've come in contact with in the last 21 days. Um, that's a huge task, thousands of volunteers on the ground doing it. Um, but if I come from a place, if that place isn't on the map, it's really hard to figure out who to get in contact with. We're looking at uh, some of the satellite imagery that is key to this. Let me bring uh, Pierre in because uh, you actually go about uh, uh, constructing this, uh, gridding up these towns, these villages. Tell me simply how you actually go about doing it. Oh, so we, we coordinate with uh, the various uh, groups. Uh, MSF asked us to first to, uh, to map a Gekedu. We did that in one day. Then we move around. We obtain new imagery and continue to trace uh, roads, identify villages, find name of villages, type of things we are doing. And how quickly can you do it? Because with Ebola, certainly the speed of spread is so fast and accurate information, the need for that also needs to be fast. So how quickly can you do this? Uh, for, for a town like Gekedu, 250,000 people, we did it in a day, but for lar large regions, for three countries, uh, that's certainly spreading faster than what we can do sometimes. But at this point, we, we've covered most of the uh, area affected. And as you're doing it, how much coordination have you got with the various aid agencies, those workers on the ground? We are working closely with MSF and Red Cross. Uh, and now uh, also with UN OSHA, the UN agencies. So all of that information from this sort of imagery fed back on the ground. Uh, Andrew, MSF were, were talking in Haiti. One of the benefits for them was to 
help in the decision making about where to actually put their best resources. That example I gave at the beginning with, with the nun and the village they were searching for, and every village they got to, they were making a consideration, do we leave our nurses and doctors and supplies here, yep. or do we keep going? It, those are absolutely critical decisions, aren't they? They are the decision that make the difference, um, putting resources in the right place at the right time. And that's what having the map a day later, so MSF or Red Cross say, we're pretty sure we have an issue in this area. Could you please help us map that? And 24 hours later, thanks to volunteers like Pierre, all the details are there. And with Ebola, I suppose the absolutely critical part of actually having workable maps, as you go through area by area, it is not to miss a village. If you miss a small pocket, presumably that is potentially absolutely fatal with this. Exactly. Um, so what Pierre would do is he would trace everything he could see on the satellite image. Um, so if he could see rivers and towns and buildings. And then because it's an open data source, other people with other context, more local context, who might actually know the area, can come in and add the names of streets and roads, villages and towns. Um, yeah. And Harry, I mean, I have no idea off the top of my head how much of the globe has been mapped. If I had to guess, I would say, presumably the majority must be, it hasn't. Would that well, be fair? Well, OpenStreetMap is a global project, uh, so even here in the UK there are people contributing to OpenStreetMap to, uh, to create a new map. I, mean, I think the exciting thing about mapping the Ebola stock region, regions is that we're, we're actually creating the very first maps in these regions. The, these places are, have not been put on any map before. Um, but yeah, it's certainly a global project. Um, it is uh, probably less detailed in the developing world because people will tend to contribute to OpenStreetMap around their neighbourhood where they live. They'll put their favourite restaurant on and that sort of thing. Uh, and just a final thought, Andrew, because there are so many strands to this. Sure. Very, very briefly, is this sort of thing, this mapping, actually saving lives there on the ground? It helps us put the right resources in the right place, yes. It definitely is. Um, well, Andrew... Harry and Pierre as well. Thanks to all of you for being with us and talking through that part of the Ebola story. Thanks very much for your time.